Oh, if you do not hand out the tracks, it will significantly affect your grade in this course. Amen? Amen. If you don't study for your verse quizzes, it will significantly impact upon your grades. But if you work hard, if you hand out your tracks and study your verses, even if you bomb your tests, you still come out fairly decent on the course. Right? Because I'm not real interested in you memorizing a lot of stuff to regurgitate it on a test. I want you to be soul winners. Okay? There we go. Why should we be soul winners? Amen. Oh, yeah, pass, pass them in over to All of them get passed in over to uh, Miss Kim. Let's go with the number one reason we should be soul winners. Amen? Yes. Yeah, we're commanded to. All right? Sir? Well, yeah, it is, but more importantly, God told me to. That's a commandment. It's not, God didn't say, hey, man, if you get a chance, you ought to think about. Matthew chapter 28 Verses 19 through 20, I have a clear command to do something. Yeah, number two reason, we'll get there. Right now, number one reason. And we can differ on that. My mind, though, if God tells me to do something, that's it. I don't have to pray about soul winning. I don't have to pray about whether or not I'm going to carry tracks. Right. I don't have to pray about whether or not I'm going to witness to people. Right. It's like tithing and going to church and all of these other things. It's not, I wonder what I'm going to, should I? God said, do it. I love the sermon last night, preacher. Ah! You know, we get these commandments and we think, well, you know, I don't really have to, but if I, you know, if I break them, then I can just play my God card and get out of it. Doesn't work that way, people. God gives us a clear commandment. Go to the lost. Go tell them about it. I mean, that's why we're left here. Secondly, and it ranks right up there with number one, people are dying and going to hell. People are dying and going to hell. I mean, we look over in Revelation, it says those whose names aren't written in the book are going to be cast into a lake of fire. They're going to be there forever. How many people here believe the Bible is literally word for word true? Yeah, but where do you believe it? Do you believe it here? Do you believe it here? When you sit there and you work and you look at that, that loved one, you look at that friend, you look at that co-worker, you look at a total stranger. And no, they don't know Jesus as Savior. Do you really believe that if they die in their sins, they will spend an eternity in hell. Not a couple of days. Not just an unpleasant feeling. They will spend an eternity where the flame is never quenched and the worm dieth not in eternal torment. In Luke, it talks about the rich man. He died and he what? Opened his eyes in torment. Now, that event happened over 2,000 years ago. Where's the rich man today? He's in torment. He's still begging for that drop of water. Where will he be 2,000 years from now? Still going to be in hell, 
still begging for that drop of water on his tongue. People, hell is a real place. And people are dying and going there. And I have been commanded to rescue them. To tell them how they can escape it. Now, is it my job to bring every man to Christ? Can't do it. But it's my job to take Christ to every man. Okay, free will. They can accept the rejected. But I have a responsibility to give them an opportunity to make that decision. Now, a lot of us like to escape that. Well, hey, you know what? I left a track in the bathroom at Chevron. I've done my duty for the week. Now, don't get me wrong. I leave tracks in the gas stations. I leave them in the bathrooms. I leave them everywhere. But that doesn't, that's not the same as me looking somebody in the face and saying, the Bible says that you're a sinner and you will go and spend an eternity in hell if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay? Folks, people are dying and going to hell. Now, we said that we should all be opportunistic soul winners. The reason people don't win souls to the Lord is often they have doubts about their own salvation. That's probably the number one reason. Okay? They have head knowledge. They don't have heart knowledge. Okay? When's the last time? And I know, oh, we're just all so busy. Okay? We're just, man, we're just so busy, 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 busy. When's the last time you took some time and sat somewhere and just thought about salvation? Thought about what Christ did for you and then thought about hell. Picture in your mind somebody that you know in hell. Picture it. Think on it. And then next, so the reason many people don't win is because they have some doubt about their own salvation. You need to pray and ask God to give you opportunities to tell others about him. Pray and ask God to give you an opportunity. Man, that ought to be part of your prayer life every day. Lord, today give me an opportunity to tell somebody about you. God, I beg you, bring somebody across my path. Let my steps be such that I come across their path. And Father, give me somebody that I can tell about you. Now there's a problem with praying that. You know what the problem is? God will give you an opportunity. And you have to then take advantage of it. Why would you pray and ask for opportunities if you're not going to take advantage of them? Why would God give you opportunities if he knows you're not going to take advantage of them? Very interesting passage in scripture. Remember what Christ said to Simon Peter when he first met him? Follow me. And what? I will make you fishers of men. Hmm. So, if you're following Christ, what will you be? If you're not a fishers of men, what are you not doing? Boy, that's a simple equation, isn't it? So, are you a fisher of men? If you're not, then I would take a look at your heart. Then I would take a look at the status of your fellowship with Christ. Because if you're a follower of Christ, he has said, and can, can Christ lie? 
And that's, that's not a, and it, I mean, that is a positive statement. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There you go. Why are we supposed to be witnesses? Because we're supposed to be followers of Christ. It's that simple. Man, he commanded us. People are dying and going to hell. We're supposed to follow him. Hmm. How about this one? Do you love God? I mean, the love of God should constrain us, right? Sit and think about what Christ did for you. It's all part of that other thought process. I mean, have you ever really just sat and thought about what Christ endured? Spend time thinking about that, picturing it in your mind. The, the public humiliation, the physical torture, the spiritual pain. Why? For me. Personalize it. And you understand it. That's what it has to be. I mean, salvation is all about a personal relationship. Don't look at it in this, well, he died for the world. You know. Yeah, he died for the world. That, that is true. But more importantly, he died for me. Okay? Sit and think about what he did for you. I mean, I sit and think about that. I don't understand it. I know what I am. I know what I have been. I mean, I, <laughs> I used to blaspheme. I used to make fun of Christians. I used, my wife would try and I'd tell her, I said, you're a weak-minded fool. But he died for me. Me. Now sit in the privacy of your room. Sit in the dark sometime and think about that. I have to be a witness for him. Because he loved me. How ungrateful could you be to receive such a great gift? And take it for granted. I mean, I, and then look at all the good things he gives us on top of it. Look at the blessings we receive. The love of God, the love of Christ should drive us to be a witness. You know, it, you got to sit and think about this. That's when it gets real. When you read your Bibles. Put yourself into it. And, and, you know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You know, amen. God so loved Jim, he gave his only begotten son so that Jim could have eternal life and never perish. Amen? Yeah, you, you can laugh at me if you want. But I sit and get to thinking like about that and, and tears will run. I can't believe it. I mean, it's just... I didn't get saved till I was 29. I can't believe God would love me enough to do that. Anyway, I, there's no options. I have no options. Amen. I don't care. Amen. Amen. It's easy and it scares so many people. I mean, stop and think about this. Have you ever just walked up to somebody and started talking to them? Hi, how are you? Man, I can't believe how cold it is out here. I can't believe how hot it is here. Did you see the Bucks game? Man, the Bucks got stomped. Uh, and Baltimore did it. Yeah. I'm from Baltimore, amen. I mean, have you ever done that? Huh? 
You can't talk to them about Jesus, though, can you? Hmm? Hi, how are you doing? My name's Jim. Boy, I hate it when that light is on. Uh, you know, I know we got to go. I love Walmart, but boy, I... So it, doesn't, it happens every time, isn't it? It doesn't matter what line I get in. That's the line. Eh, just being friendly, just talking to somebody. You can do that. But what's the problem? What do we do? Uh, we're so interested in our... So wrap up, man. You, you never look. Look people in the face. Just look at them. Look them in the face. You'll be amazed when you look people in the face. You'll be surprised how much pain there is out there. In our own school, I've seen people sitting in the lobby, and it just looked like they were being crushed. People walking back and forth. You know, it's like they, they don't even, well, you're not in my clique, so you don't exist. Mm. Then you look at them and you see that. And maybe all it would take is a word. That's all it takes out there. Look at these people. Man, you can't believe what the burdens some of these people are carrying. You can smile and talk to them. Oh, wow, man, it's hot out there. And people will respond. They'll respond. You smile. Hey, I'm not talking about looking like an idiot. Don't, you know, don't let them think, oh, this guy's stalking me, you know, amen, no. But you're happy. You're a pleasant person. What happens if I step out the door and the building collapses on me and I suffer terrible pain for six months and then die. What happens? Go I go to heaven. Hey, man. So what do I ought to have in me? Joy. Joy. I ought to be a happy person. Amen. 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 Well, what do we do? My feet hurt. My back hurts. This person's aggravating me. It's so miserable. My life is so terrible. Wouldn't you like to know Jesus? You're laughing, but how many of us go through life like that? Man, it's hot out there. How you doing? See the Bucks game? Man, can you believe how much gas is? Anything. Hi. And smile. And then look them in the eyes and be friendly. And don't stare. I'm not, but look at, you know. <laughs> How you doing? Man. And then talk to them about something that's going to interest them. Oh, that's a cute baby. I got grandkids like that. Oh, that's so good. Well, I got a little sister. I got a little bit of baby. Oh, man, going fishing. I love going fishing. Standing over. Guy standing over the fishing pole. Oh, I love going fishing. Right? Don't you love going fishing? Ah. But whatever. Right? You start a conversation. It's not hard to do. Hi, how are you? Hey. Amen. What a cute baby. <laughs> Even if it looks like Yoda. <laughs> I'm sorry. Father, forgive me. Ah. Oh. Just be friendly and start talking to them. And God will give you an opportunity. A lot of people simply don't believe they can walk into a church. They think they've got to be invited like it's some kind of secret society. Not only that, but people drive back and forth and they see a bunch of, of white guys in suits standing out in front of the building. And they think unless they're a white guy in a suit, they can't go in. My brother was here. Sunday night. I ain't got no clothes. <laughs> so it looks to me like you're dressed. Well, you know what I mean. I said, no, I don't mean. So you can go to church like that. I said, 
Dang, it don't matter what you're wearing. Oh, okay. A lot of people think that way. So invite them. Oh, it's okay. You don't need them. Have tracks. You can give them a track. Amen? Invite them to church. Well, I'm Catholic or I'm Lutheran or I'm Episcopalian. I'm a... Do you know the answer? Well, I'm glad to hear you're interested in spiritual things. Read this. And we're not trying to steal you from your church, but do you have services on, on Sunday night or Wednesday night? When? Man, it's a great place. You ought to come visit us. You, you ought to be there. Love to see you there. Hey, huh? come on. Well, I don't know anybody. You know me? I'll be there. My wife will be there. And that's the other thing. Guys, be careful about going up to young girls. Girls, be careful about going up to guys. Amen? I mean, when you don't witness, I mean, I'm not saying don't witness to them, but be very careful. You know, I, if I'm talking to a lady or a young girl, I'm like, yeah, my wife and I, I always, I say my wife dozens of times. Okay, always, my wife, my wife, my wife, my daughter, my wife. So that they don't think I'm hitting on them. You know, I'm some kind of silly old perv out there. So, I want them to know that I'm trying to invite you to church and my family's going to be there. Okay? Here's four things that you need to know about unsaved people. The four great needs of men. Number one, everybody, everybody needs to be genuinely loved. Everybody needs to be genuinely loved. Now, the majority of us in this room, and I, and, and I know it, might not be all of us, but the majority of us in this room don't know what it's like to be unloved. I mean, we grow up in a nurturing atmosphere. Okay? Because most of us are from Christian families. Or at least a, a stable you know, we don't know what it's like to have an abusive father, an alcoholic mother. Or we don't know what it's like to be one of these unloved. I told you the story about my wife. I mean, I was retired from the army. Okay? And 20 years in the army. And, and so you know how much time it is. That was the first time my father-in-law ever told my wife he loved her. There's a lot of people out there like that. That's, that's one of the reasons young girls get involved in immorality. They want to be loved. They want someone to tell them, I love you. So that's one of the needs. There. Boy, I just, if someone would just love me. Number two, everybody needs to feel of worth. Everybody needs to feel of worth to be important to somebody. Who do you think you are? I've seen parents crush kids. I've seen people crush other people. I mean, we treat them like cast offs. Okay? Have you seen the, probably not, the Methodists are running a lot of TV commercials. <clears throat> Come as you are, we accept you. We may not all believe the same. But you're welcome. You're, you know, they're doing this. The Mormon run at Christmas time. Another, yeah. you know, the family. Your, the love. The, you know, oh, you're important. Why do they do this? Because they know that that is the great desire of man. And by man, I'm talking about mankind. <coughs> we want to be loved. We want to feel of worth. We're important to somebody. 
Well, let me ask you something. How important are you? Christ died for me. If I am of no other worth, that puts the greatest price on me that could be that could be given. Christ died for me. How much love can there be? How much greater love can there be than that he would sacrifice himself for me? And then it all comes back around to now I am standing here looking at you telling you that you're important. I care for you. You know, I'm not telling total strangers I love you, but I am expressing concern for them, care for them. Okay? And they can sense that. They can see that. And, and ooh, the impact. That stirs something in their hearts. Because, man, that's what that great big hole is there for. That's what they're doing the drugs for. That's what they're doing all of the things that they're doing. They want to feel loved. They want to feel of worth to somebody. Do you care? Does anybody care for me? Okay. They need to be genuinely loved. They need to feel of worth. How many of you guys are on bus rides? Most of you guys are on bus rides. Third great need, they need hope. Everybody needs hope. Man, you go out there and you'll ride along. And here's this clay road leading out into the groves. And you go out there and there's just a little clearing with some maybe trailers or something. Abject poverty. I mean, terrible situations. And alcohol, drugs, uh, physical, mental, sexual abuse, cesspools out there. Why do so many teenagers try to commit suicide? No hope. No hope. You mean this is as good as it's going to get? <laughs> man, if this was as good as it was going to get, I'd commit suicide. I would. Oh, man. They need hope. Amen. They need a lifeline. They need someone to tell them you're loved. You are worth something. And there's hope. Even if you don't have everything you might want down here, one day, one day, you're going to be in the very presence of God. And he'll wipe away your tears. He'll heal your afflictions. And oh, you'll bask in the love of God. <clears throat> There's hope. Amen. Amen. And finally, they need a purpose for living. Anybody ever hear of a midlife crisis? Amen. Yeah, oh, amen. Hallelujah. I didn't get saved until I was 29. I know all about a midlife crisis. You get to a point in your life and you stand there and you go, what's the use? What's the, what's the purpose for living? You know? I dig in the ditch to get the money, to buy the food, to get the strength, to dig in the ditch. Yeah, man. Some people, that's all they see. There's this cycle. Man, I get up in the morning <laughs> and go to work and do something I hate doing just so that I can get some money to buy stuff that doesn't matter so that I'll have the strength and the wherewithal to get up tomorrow morning and go do it all over again. 
Wow. Is that all there is to life? Is that all there is? I have a purpose. God left me here to do something. Amen? He commanded me to do something. And, and I can see around me that there's things that need to be done. I need to be about my father's business. We need a purpose for living, and we can give it to him. So, I said, God commands it. People are perishing. The love of God constraineth us. Who can think of another reason? Come on, guys. To fulfill a purpose. To fulfill a purpose. It said the love of God fulfill a purpose. We need to get back to the basics. Lord, I'm praying and I'm asking you, Father, <clears throat> to give me an opportunity to witness to somebody today. Amen. And then I open my eyes and I walk out and I look for places that I can do it. I can do it at Walmart. I can do it at the gas station. I can do it walking down the street. I can do it in a restaurant. I can do it anywhere. And God will bring opportunities along. Just hand them a track. Smile. How many people have ever been hurt handing out a track? The closest I came, I was down at Save a Lot, the guy in front of me. You know, you got to buy your bags at Save a Lot. They don't give you bags for your groceries. He got all checked out and said, Well, give me a bag. He said, Well, it, and he'd written a check. Well, I don't have any money. So I reached in my pocket and I pulled out like a dime or whatever it is. I, Here, give the man a bag. Smiled. How are you, sir? Oh, that was, I said, no, it's all right, man, it ain't nothing. Oh, you know. So he gets the bag out, and, there's, and I just took a track out of my pocket, and I dropped it in the bag. I said, here, just read that. Ooh. His countenance changed. He pulled the track out of the bag, crumpled it up, and threw it at me. <laughs> took his groceries and left. Poor Jim. Wasn't that terrible? I got to give a track to the cashier. I got to give a track to everybody standing in line around me. Because they all felt sorry for me. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, man, if that's worse that happens to me today, I'm okay. But, man, you know, all I was going to do is invite him to come down to church because it's such a great place. Man, you, know, man I, you can't believe how many people I got to witness to. Take advantage of them. Amen? Let me go on. Four reasons people don't, unsaved people say they don't go to church. The people there are so unfriendly. The people there are so unfriendly. I don't understand the preaching, number two. I don't understand the preaching. Number three, the church is boring. Oh, you just sat there. Ah, the people are so unfriendly. I don't understand the preaching. Church is boring. And then fourthly, there's nothing for the children. There's nothing for the teenagers. There's nothing. Da 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 da. Do you 
Now I'm going to tell you four things about Landmark Baptist Church, which, by the way, is true of any of our churches. Prayerfully, amen? Now these are the four reasons. If you ask somebody to come to church, they'll tell you, well, I, I don't like to go to church because the people are so unfriendly. Or, I don't like to go because I don't understand the preaching. Or, I, you know, I, 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 I've gone a couple, but it's so, just so boring. Or, I, you know, I, I, I would love to, but, you know, it's just there's nothing there for the children. Or the Hi, my name's Jim. How you doing? What? Oh, that's a beautiful baby. I got grandkids. Yeah. What? It doesn't figure every line I get into, that light starts blinking. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It happens to me at the bank. It happens to me. It happens to me anywhere. Amen? Yeah. You know, just tell me. Yeah? You from around here? Really? Really? Well, hey, let me, let me invite you to come down and visit us at Landmark. Let me tell you something. What a friendly place it is. You know, I mean, it, it's a place you can find. Friends. It's a great place. I can't believe how friendly Landmark Baptist is. You know, when I first moved down here, I was worried. But, I, man, what a friendly place Landmark is. And not only that, that Pastor Carter, boy, I tell you what. It's just practical preaching. He brings it right down there where you can understand it. It's just, it's just right for everyday living. Man, I'll tell you what. He opens that Bible, and I just can't believe how easy he makes it to understand. And, and I'm telling you what. Boy, the service is down there with the singing and, and just the, it's just, it's an exciting place to be. And they have something for everybody. You really ought to come visit us. Now, what have I done? Covered all four of them. What excuse do they have? None. And I'm being such a friendly guy. Believe it or not, most people will be friendly back to you. I've put them in a position where, I mean, the only thing they can do is say, no, I don't want to. They don't have no excuses anymore. Man, I'd really love for you. Well, you work Sunday morning? Well, come. We got services on Sunday night. Man, it's a great time down there. I'm telling you, it, it is so friendly. And, and I just, it's just a great place to be. I'd love to have you come down. Visit. My wife and I will be standing at the back of the church. We'll, I mean, you can just look for us. We'll be right there. Man, I'd love to have you come visit with us. Now, there you go. You have invited them to church. You have started being a witness. You, you've, uh, standing in line at Walmart. Standing at the gas station. Say, well, I'm an Episcopalian. Well, man, I'm glad to hear that you're interested in spiritual things. Well, we don't want to steal you away from your church, but you just, I mean, come down there on a Wednesday night. Do you guys have service on Wednesday night? Come on down. Man, what a great time we have. And, and, and read that. If you're interested in spiritual things, that'll really, you, you'll really be interested in that. I wouldn't want to steal you from your church. No. no. I, I don't want to steal them from the church. I want to get them saved and the Holy Spirit will take them. So, <laughs> hey man, he'll do it. But it's all about just being friendly. And just talking to people. And once again though, the girls sang about this last week in order to touch the world or, or another to do anything for the world. What have I got to do? I've got to touch the world. I've got to see the world. Our problem is we walk around with our heads down buried in our own thoughts. You stand in line buried in your own thoughts. We hurry from place to place. And the only thing we see is our problems and our friends. And we don't see the unwashed masses around us. Be friendly. Be sweet. Be all of these things. Amen? God commanded us. Lost people are dying and going to hell. The love of God constraineth us. It's our purpose for living. Amen? And not doing it is the greatest act of ingratitude, unthankfulness that a man could be accused of. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Sometime between now and next Tuesday, find the time to sit somewhere 
by yourself with no distractions. Spend 10 minutes, maybe 15. I don't want to press you because I know how busy you are. Right? <laughs> but find 10 or 15 minutes to sit somewhere with no distractions and think about what Jesus has done for you. Think about hell. Picture somebody you know in torment. And then pray and ask God to give you opportunities. Lord, I thank and praise you for the students. I'd ask that you'd be with us. Father, help us to be burdened for souls. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.